Culture Clash, uh, we, we started out in 1984, San Francisco's Mission District. Our first performance was at an art gallery, and it was the thought of getting um, Shadow Latinos uh, to uh, explore kind of um, being bicultural, bilingual, being Latinos here in mainstream America, and thus the name Culture Clash, which, which means uh, being Latino in the dominant culture, and also the culture clash between our own nationalities, um, the Latino brown rainbow. And we explored through, back in the day, through satire. We did a lot of sketch comedy, a lot of stand-up. I never read Kafka. I never read Tolstoy. I don't even know the words to La Bamba. I'm a Chicano trapped inside the Beverly Center, and I can't get out. Well, we started out that way in 84. We were very interested in comedy and stand-up. That was high satire. We were we're still very proud of that show. Definitely Culture Clash was able to go into the regional theaters with that kind of work all across the country. But over the years we had to grow and we had to learn how to write plays and put together nights of theater that would be a much more substantial. And you know, what started out as a weekend experiment on uh, Cinco de Mayo, 1984, has become a 30-year journey in the success we found was that we were bringing in a new audience and, and that's what we're hoping to do in Boston. We've got to rush in into that area and, and um, what can be sometimes a well-heeled theater going audience and take them down a street they wouldn't normally walk down. That's, that's what Culture Clash um, is about. It's, it's rather carefully curated voices um, that we have found in our 30-year period and, and it's going to be startling uh, what connects here in a place in a place like Boston. Hey, you. Death to the governor of this bare Republic of California, yay, I say, and I forget exactly what the events that led me to this moment and I will be here, I will be there, I will be Everywhere, my brothers and sisters need me to wear my mask. California! We're, we're speaking for Jewish Americans, uh, African Americans, uh, Latinos that are Puerto Rican, white, uh, Asian, and those were the plays where we did community-based um, interviews with the community that we were performing at. We also are patriots. We also look at the flag the same way as somebody who says, I'm a patriot. One character that we met, a person that we borrowed her life story and is one of the characters in our show, but she wasn't a character when we met her. Just a, a dedicated um, AIDS worker um, in San Francisco's homeless community. I mean, just think about that, okay? Homeless, AIDS, I mean, that means someone's working in the front lines of um, hotels and needles and condoms and she just kind of turned our little Chicano Latino heads around and uh, she was about saving lives and, um, and, and one of the most highly impacted um, at-risk areas in the country, you know. Whether it be Boston or Chicago or Texas or conservative parts of Orange County in California, I've never seen anything but audiences just cheering for her. We used to have six people in our group. It eventually came down to the three of us, Herbert Seguenza, Richard Montoya, and uh, Rick Salinas. We've been together a long time, so coming back here is going to be great. It's going to be a reunion, too. 30-year anniversary, you know? Culture Clash Reunion! We started in 1984. Yeah. Bulgaria, Yugoslavia! Yeah. What happened to Russia, the Communist Party? The party's over, Holmes. Get off! It's in those surprising moments that, that, uh, that, that we find our ability to laugh, and that laughter kind of connects us because it's just, it's, it's uproarious laughter throughout the show. And I, I, we, I don't think we've been able to figure out that alchemy, except that it, it's there. Mexicans, right? Any Mexicans here? Woo! One Mexican, oh yeah! Now I know we're the East Coast. <laughs> I tried to go for my gun and he caught me. The notion that I would have done that has done something to my inner psyche that is more detrimental, more mind-boggling than whatever they took. Whatever they took is irrelevant. I came to this country with three dresses. 
So as long as I have more than three dresses, I'm ahead of the game. After all, we're putting people's lives um, on stage. We're putting it out there and, uh, in hopes that other Americans sitting in the audience will, will not just find sympathy and cheer, but we're trying to humanize the unhumanizable. The work can be political and it can be social commentary. But like Lenny Bruce and George Carlin and Richard Pryor and our heroes, we're after that mix of uh, high comedy and high drama. Huh? And there you go. There you go, kids. Gad, tell your parents, come to the show. Richie and Ricky. We gonna, gave it our all. We're gonna knock your socks we off. We've been here a week in Boston. Can't wait to get back. <laughs>